Hello, beautiful soul tribe. It's Lori from Crystal Earth Magic. And a lot of you have been asking me, what is the best way to connect with spirit, with your guides, with source, with your angels, with your star families? Um, and so I wanted to talk a little bit about that today because it really isn't that complicated. A lot of people try to make it so complicated that they don't keep doing it and they stop. And so I want, as I, as I like to do everything, I like to make it simple, um, something that you can do anywhere, anytime, and all you need is you. You know, you can bring in as many tools as you want. Certainly crystals are helpful. Certainly uh, perhaps aromatherapy is helpful. Certainly there are many, many things that are helpful if it can get you into that grounded centered state so that you can actually hear the messages coming from your team. So, you know, I've talked a lot about that in, in many videos because it is so important. The number one thing <laughs> that we need to do is come into stillness. If you are trying to connect with your spirit guides or, or your team in any way, and you're not quiet, how can you hear them? OK, um, you need to do whatever you need to do to ground, connect your energy into Mother Earth, get rid of the stress of your day and actually be still. OK, that doesn't mean that you can't be out walking in the woods because that is an inner stillness. It doesn't mean you can't be doing yoga or Qigong or, or something like that. That is also coming into stillness internally. All right. Um, you don't have to sit there and ohm in the lotus position, right, for 10 hours in order to connect with your guides. You don't. You can be sitting there having a cup of coffee. You can be just um, cutting up vegetables, <laughs> whatever it is. There, there is nothing that is going to prevent you from doing that. You don't have to do it in any particular way as long as you can come into stillness. If you're not in stillness, you can't hear the messages that are coming and you're going to be looping and racing thoughts and you're not going to be able to connect in the way that you want to. So first of all, number one, come into stillness, however you can do that, you know, grounding, crystals, uh, breathing exercises, going out in nature, um, doing something that you love, sitting by a big tree. There, there are many, many ways to do it. Imagining that you're the tree with roots going deep into the ground, um, perhaps taking a cleansing shower, getting rid of whatever is keeping your mind looping and racing. You know, there, there are many things. Also, you can ask for help from your team to help you calm down. And I know whenever I'm doing um, healing sessions and someone's having a hard time relaxing and getting into that meditative state, I'll ask their guides to do it for them. I'll ask their higher self, hey, can you help them get there? And almost always it works <laughs> unless the person is actively blocking. And sometimes people do. Um, it may not be a conscious thing and it may be a conscious thing. You know, a, a lot of people say that they want to connect, but they really have a fear. And that's something else we'll talk about in a minute is having that fear that keeps you from connecting. So first of all, find yourself in that stillness, in that peace. Make sure you will not be disturbed. You know, whether you have to close yourself off in, in a bedroom, um, a corner of your house, out in your yard, um, walking in nature where no one will bother you. You know, um, there, there are many, many different ways to, if you have to lock yourself in your car <laughs> on your lunch break, fine. W whatever you have to do to find that peace and, uh, and privacy, because so many people do not have those quiet moments because something or someone is always vying for your attention, you know, and that includes pets, you know, the pets, sometimes I, I know my cats used to want to be part of the meditation, but they would be pawing and, you know, trying to climb up my back when they saw the energy rising and, or, or you know, the feet under the door, or if you tried to lock the door. And I know a lot of people, um, animals kind of bother them. If you talk to your animals, um, they will become part of the meditation and not to try to be vying for your attention at every moment. Again, all of these things you can communicate. We are connected to all that is. And so we can communicate with the animals, with the plants, with each other, you know, with, with the realm of spirit. We're not separate. And so just setting that intention and actually communicating, it can be telepathically. It can be through the heart. Try it. There, 
there are many um, people who talk about methods that you have to do. Why don't you just try it your way? As long as you're doing it from the heart and in earnest um, and with pure intent, it'll work. So, okay, coming into stillness, grounding, and not, not being um, disturbed. Now you've got this time for yourself, even if it's a few minutes, okay? We talked about, a little bit about all of this in our meditation video, but this is something um, I want to expand on. So, okay, just come into stillness and start taking some deep breaths. If you're walking, just focus on breathing and focus on the beautiful scenery around you. Whatever it is, again, to come into that peace and that stillness. How do you know when you're in peace and stillness? Your mind's not racing. Your body isn't tense. And you're letting go of the outside world and tuning into your inside world. Okay. How do you know that that's the case? You feel that expansion that we've talked about in other videos. You feel open and expansive and ready to be filled up with whatever is coming. How do you know if you're not in that space? You have looping, racing thoughts. Your body is tense. You feel that constriction in your chest, in your gut. Okay. Um, learn the difference between those sensations and you'll know when you're ready. Okay. Or maybe you just sit down and give it a go. There's nothing wrong with doing that either. You know, that's how a lot of us started is you just give it a go. And okay. So now, now you're in that place. Simply set your intention. I would like to connect with my guides of the highest love and light, the highest vibration. And perhaps you have a question. Perhaps you would like some guidance on something. Set that intention. I mean, they're with you all the time. They hear you. You can say it out loud. You can write it down or you can just think it, but think it with pure intent. If thoughts come, you can observe them and let them float away like little balloons or little leaves on a river, whatever, you know, visualization you want, just let them float away. Don't try to suppress them because that just creates stress. You know, oh, I can't do it. I, I'm the only one that can't do it. Right. So Again, just letting the thoughts go. Eventually, you will come to the place. If you sit, if you sit or you are in stillness for long enough, and that doesn't need to be a long, long time. If you are doing that for long enough, whatever that is for you, the thoughts will quiet down. And perhaps they will stop altogether and you will come to that pure place of stillness, setting your intention, breathing saying, dear spirit, tell me what I need to know. Dear higher self, will you help me with whatever the issue is? Or dear spirit, I just want to feel you. You know, sometimes if I'm having a difficult time or a bad day, I'll, I'll just say group hug guys. You know, <laughs> I mean, that's also very helpful because we know intellectually that we have all this help around us, but we need to feel it. And once you feel it, it is a game changer. You can't unknow it, you know? So maybe that's where you start off if you're new at, at all of this and you're doubting that you're really connecting. Ask for proof. It's okay to ask for proof. There's nothing wrong with asking for proof. Your team wants you to, uh, you know, awaken to their presence and to really feel their presence more than anything. And so they will do whatever it takes to help you get there. So, so don't think you're doing it wrong or you're offending them. They're not on that level. They're not on that 3D level. They're beyond that. The ones that you want to connect with are of the highest love and light. They love you unconditionally. There's nothing you can do that's going to upset them or make them angry or make them go away from you if they are your team of the highest love and light. And that's what you always want to connect with. So how do you know when you're connecting? You will feel love expansion in your heart. You will feel perhaps a warmth or even sometimes people feel kind of a chill through their body. You know, um, the way that my team has explained it to me is if they're working with you on the physical level, you often feel warmth. If they're working on the etheric levels, you often feel cold. And often that's what people uh, feel when we're doing group meditations or, or those kinds of things um, or personal healing sessions, they, they will feel that warmth or that cold, depending on what level um, their team is working on. So, okay, you will, you know, the, the difference in temperature changes, you may feel your heart open. Some people feel such an overwhelming emotion come up in them because it's, it's a love that they've never touched before. 
it's a, it's that unconditional love that we can't even have a concept of until we sense it from spirit. The closest thing that we come to on this earth of that kind of love is when we first um, are in the love bubble, you know, that, that you're in love and you're in the love bubble and nothing can touch you, nothing can harm you, you don't need to sleep, you don't need to eat, everything's perfect. Guess what? That other person is reflecting your divinity to you. It's not because of them. It's you guys are doing it together. You're reflecting each other's divinity. And that's the feeling, that feeling of your heart completely open, um, completely expanded. And that's what we're going for, because that's what you will feel when you're really connecting with your team, if you allow it. OK, you'll feel that opening of your heart. You may feel tears welling up in your eyes because it is so much emotion and it's so beautiful that sometimes we don't know what to do with that. And it's overwhelming. And so if that happens, don't try to suppress the tears. Let it come. Let your body completely feel that sensation because you can't unknow it then and you won't doubt again. After you felt that you will not doubt again, you know, it won't always be that strong probably for most people, but sometimes it is. And sometimes it's frequent, you know, when you get to that place where it's just that, that bliss, that complete and utter bliss, you're out of time. It doesn't matter. Um, time and space doesn't matter. You could be there forever and it would be fine. You know, sometimes you open your eyes and it's been a very long time. Sometimes it's only been a few minutes and it seems like a long time. In either way, you're out of linear time when you, when you hit that. So just feel it. And even that feeling going through you, uh, becoming part of your, your core energy there, even that is incredibly healing. Just to know on a cellular, molecular level, a DNA level, that you are love beyond measure. You know, even if you can't see them, you know they're there. OK, you have a team of so many people around, so many beings around you, you know, again, so many that we can't even um, fathom it in our little 3D brain. So so just remember that. And, and that's the first step is to come into stillness and ask to feel that love. Ask for them to show their presence to you. Ask them to amplify their energy. It's something I always do during healing sessions because when we establish that connection at the beginning of a session, that is the most important thing for the client. And that's the most important thing for all of us as we're trying to meditate and connect with our team is to feel that love, that heart opening, that overwhelming bliss and joy that comes from that feeling of being supported unconditionally, loved unconditionally, nurtured unconditionally. And just for a moment, it reminds us that we're down here playing a role and that we're not separate <laughs> from, from all of these beautiful beings. Many of these beings around us are aspects of us in higher dimensional realities, such as our higher self, such as many of our guides. You know, And again, that's a topic for another day. But connecting with your team is as simple as asking and being still and then feeling, OK? Um, how do you know if you're connecting with your beautiful team? Number one. You're going to feel overwhelming love, like I said. Uh, your team will never say anything to you that uh, berates you, that goes against your natural senses. Um, they will not tell you you have to do something. They will not make you feel bad about something or chastise you about something. You know, sometimes they joke around. They're very humorous. And they, since they're part of you, will interact with you in the way that you would want to be interacted with. So if you're a very humorous person, your team is going to be very humorous with you. But if you're new to this and you're not sure, you know, they're they're going to be all completely loving and supporting and they're never going to tell you what you have to do. They're never going to tell you to do something that goes against your principles. <clears throat> they're never going to tell you to harm yourself or another. Um, you will feel, unless you are in fear because of something else, and we'll talk about that in a minute. You're not going to feel any constriction or yucky energy. You're not going to be afraid. You know, you, you will just feel that overwhelming love and the opening and the expansion. <clears throat> so that's, pardon me, that's how you know you're connected with your benevolent spiritual team. Now, if you go into meditation and you're in a low vibration, you're angry, you're upset, whatever. Um, remember, like attracts like, the law of attraction. So if you're in one of those moods, 
um, you might want to try to raise your vibration before you go into meditation, just so you don't attract yucky stuff. There's a lot of nasty energy hanging around, especially as the earth ascends, as people wake up, as people raise their vibration, as the earth raises its vibration. There's a lot of um, yucky energy around that wants to feed off of people. You know, it's part of the reason that the dark forces have tried to keep us in fear and anger and the low vibrations for so many eons because they feed upon it. They feed upon that negative energy. It's it's sustenance to them. As we raise our vibration, they can't do it. OK, it's just not compatible. So anyway, if, if you are connecting with something that is less than love and light, um, you'll you'll feel yucky they they might um be telling you to do something that goes against your principles they might tell you that you're bad or that you're lacking in some way or that you have to do something a certain way or that you should harm yourself or another those kinds of things you know it's very black and white it really is you know you can't fake that love energy the dark forces can't bring that they can flatter you they can say all sorts of things to um inflate your ego but they're, they cannot come, um, come to you with that love energy because they don't have that. They don't know what that is. They cannot reproduce that. It's, it's impossible. So, you know, the most important thing is to know that feeling. And many of us have never felt that before we connected with spirit. Again, the closest thing is with our pets. <laughs> you know, we love them unconditionally or when you're first in love in that love bubble or maybe a newborn baby or your children. You might, you might feel that unconditional love with, not when the child maybe is a teenager, but when they're first born, <laughs> you know, um, but it, it's difficult for humans on this earth to come into that unconditional love because we don't know what it is. We haven't felt it. It's been so dark, you know? Um, so, so that's, that's the most important thing is to know the difference. You know, um, I see a lot of people attracting dark energies because they're coming from a place of lack or, uh, fear or anger or revenge, all of those kinds of things, that's not going to get you where you want to go ultimately. And it's going to leave you with attachments that do not serve your greater good. We're going to talk about that in probably the next video, <clears throat> how to how to work with those um, negative attachments and energies and things like that. But today we just want to connect with our benevolent spirit guides and our benevolent team and source and our higher self. So coming, grounding, coming into stillness, just breathing, just being present, asking for them to make their presence known, um, to send you love, to be all around you, um, to amplify their energy so you can feel it beyond the shadow of a doubt. And that's something I've said to my guides before too. It's like, hit me over the head with it in case I'm really dense today so that there's no doubt that that message was from you so that there's no doubt, you know, cause some days we're busy, we can't focus, but we still um, are requiring answers or guidance to whatever it is. Um, and uh, here's, here's an example. So I had, I had a question. I, I remember when I was starting my business and some of you guys have already heard this story, but I think it really illustrates things well. Um, when I was starting my business, you know, I was still working full time as a nurse. Everybody was poo pooing it. So I stopped telling everybody what I was doing and I just went ahead and did it. So when I was going to like sign all the paperwork and officially do everything, I was having a little bit of an anxiety attack saying, oh my gosh, am I doing the right thing? Am I crazy? And um, on the way there, there were all sorts of signs, first of all. So 444 four, four is my number. It's my connection with, with uh, my archangel Gabriel, who is, is my lineage. Anyway, that, that's a story for another day, but 444, four, four, it's always Gabriel and I com communicating. So a car pulls in front of me, license plate 4444. Four, four, four. Okay. Um, I get to the place, everything, exa you know, examples of um, how to fill out the paperwork. Everything was 444, four, 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 every, everywhere, billboards, um, every, everywhere that I looked was 4444. Four, four, four. So I knew that they were giving me messages. And that was that day when I said, hit me over the head with it in case I'm really dense today. And they did. It was everywhere. It was everywhere. Um, another time. Uh, this was years ago before I really understood all this kind of stuff. And, you know, that's not to say I understand all of it now, but I understand it better than I did then. 
um, when, when my cat died and I, you know, I just wanted to know if he was okay. This was a, a year after he died. It would have been his birthday. And I'm like, is he okay? And his name was Merlin. And that day, I'm not kidding you. I saw three license plates with Merlin written on it. I mean, really? Um, that day I was in, I was in a room um, where I did Reiki. It was, I was working at another place, another uh, lady's place at the time. And uh, there was a statue of Merlin in the room. And I'd been in that room a number of times and um, never saw it before, but there it was. Uh, back when I had TV, I turned on the TV at home and there was a show about Merlin. I mean, it was everywhere. So, so I mean, those are the kinds of things where they'll hit you over the head, you know, if you ask them to. So again, those are messages from your team, you know, in response to a question that you had or some guidance, you know, um, if you're going to leave it open, so it's not just a yes, no question, you know, hey, what is my best guidance on my career or my relationship or whatever it is? Sit and be still. Let that come in. You know, it, it'll come in during meditation, but you might not have it in your conscious awareness right away. Let it kind of percolate. Maybe over the next few hours or days, it will come to you and you will know it. You know, you know how you get those bolts from the blue and you just know it, or you know it in your heart, you know it in your gut, you just know it. Take that as your first inclination that you have gotten your message. Don't let your mind screw around with it and say, oh, but that was just because. No, these are messages from your team. You're connecting. You know, if you, with pure intent, want to connect, you're connecting. You know, a lot of people were afraid um, when they were younger. Perhaps they, they could see ghosts or perhaps there were demonic or evil spirits around that they could see. Perhaps they saw them attached to other people. And, and that was very scary for a child because who do you tell what your parents are going to think you're crazy and put you on medication, right? Um, at least that's how it was when we were kids, you know, in those times, that's what no one believed in that kind of stuff. No one would dare believe in that kind of stuff. And if you did, um, you were ostracized, right? So um, that there's that too. So if you're afraid, deal with that fear first and just ask to feel the love. Ask to feel that love so that you feel safe, so that you feel honored, that you feel nurtured, and that there's you know that there's nothing to fear. Connecting with our team is something that we can do during the entire day. As we walk through our day, we can be completely connected to the realm of spirit all the time. You don't have to go into some deep meditation laying on the bed or, you know, oming in the lotus position. Like I said, it's it's not necessary. That might have been necessary for some people that might have been necessary in an older energy. And there's nothing wrong with that. But let's be practical. We're here to bring heaven to earth. And, and our mystery school is walking through our 3D life every single day, bringing heaven to earth. That's what we're here to do. There are people who are meant to be the masters on the mountaintops. Apparently, if you're watching this, you're not one of them and neither am I. We're here to slog it out through 3D and to bring heaven to earth the best way that we can. Um, and we can connect all day long with our higher self, you know, and always know, you know, most of us do. We have such intuitive gifts. Most of us are connected, but we don't trust and we look to other people to tell us what we should be doing. We look, you know, we look to oracles, we look to cards, we look to readers. There's nothing wrong with that, not at all. But understand it's all inside. Everything that you need is inside you. Um, everything you need to connect is inside you. All you need to do is be still and be open, okay? And understand it's gonna come to everybody in a different way. We all feel. Every single one of us can feel the energy. Not everybody is going to have visions and colors and, you know, fireworks going off every time you meditate, um, every time you want to connect with your team. It's usually a very subtle thing. And remember, 3D screams and spirit whispers. You cannot hear the whispers if you're caught up in all the noise that's going on out there or the noise that's going on in your head. So, Connecting with your team is the most natural thing in the world. Simply ask. Ask to be shown. Ask to be shown little proofs 
you know, little by little by little, you will gain the confidence and the trust that you're not doing it wrong. You can't do it wrong. The only thing wrong would be is if you approached it from a negative um, energetic state and perhaps attracted things that you don't want to connect with. Okay. So give it a try. And the more you practice it, the easier it becomes. You know, it's like anything else. You have to practice it so that it's second nature, so that you can do it anywhere, anytime, you know, and you don't need all this ritual and roundup and uh, all of that kind of stuff. Um, I remember one time, uh, if you guys remember uh, some of the old cryon material when, when um, from Lee Carroll and, and cryon said, go ahead, light your incense, pray to the East, do whatever. And he's like, we'll wait. <laughs> and I mean, that's exactly how I feel that they'll wait any of that ritual stuff. You can't do it wrong because it's for you. It's to get you into the mood. You know, you, you don't, you're not worshiping gods or your spirit guides, nothing. We're all part of the same source. Um, and, and so they're just waiting for us to be ready. So if you want to do those things to make yourself in the mood, to get yourself ready, work with whatever tools you have, but they're not necessary. You are the only tool. Um, that is necessary and you can do it anytime, anywhere. So hopefully this was helpful. Just know that these things are very simple, but again, we need to practice them every day. Um, and then we'll feel more confident. Once you're more confident, everything becomes easier. Think of any skill that you have learned and the more you do it, the more it becomes second nature, the more you are confident that you can do it again and again and again. And pretty soon you'll realize you're walking through life connected. And you're not separate, you know, um, but again, always ask for the highest um, love and light beings um, to come into your energy field, you know, and practice the sovereignty mantra. I am a sovereign being. Only love, only light may come into my body and energy field. I do not consent to any lower energies. And that will be very helpful. So again, this is Lori with Crystal Earth Magic, and I hope to see you in the next video. And I hope this was helpful. Have a wonderful day. Bye.